Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. Uh, I previously completed my review of Pokemon Adventures Red and Blue, a seven volume set. Uh, volume eight starts Pokemon Adventures Gold and Silver, uh, adapting the second uh, generation of games in the franchise into its own into its own story. And uh, so this is my first time going through the Gold and Silver arc. I'd read the Red and Blue arc before. It's the same creative team, Hidenori, Kusaka, and the art by Mato. Uh, this is going to be a pretty perfunctory view because my overall view of the series is the same. This is, it, it's very, it's a very creative adaptation and kind of what I respect at, about it from a writing perspective is doing a lot with very sparse information. The, the very early Pokemon games, uh, are very, uh, limited in just how, how much data there was about the Pokemon. And yet it was some of the details were suggestive enough that you could kind of like imagine this bigger, uh, exciting adventure world while, while playing these very simple uh, bare, bare bones games. Uh, Hidenori, I think his neatest uh, trait as a writer is he pays a lot of attention to the little details of the game and he spots things that uh, were maybe just meant to be like a little throwaway line about how this Pokemon's got this cool trait. And he uses that to basically frame a whole little adventure story or add a lot of flair and fun to an adventure story. The other neat thing is when translating a JRPG, which is all turn-based combat, into something that's supposed to feel a little bit more like a real-world situation, he has to imagine sort of like creative ways for battles to take place that are just bigger than the basic strategies of Pokemon. And all of that comes across in uh, Gold and Silver. And the final thing is, how do you keep it fresh? Because in a, in a series like Pokemon, it's for little kids, the, the obvious appeal is cool monsters fighting each other. So how do you continue having characters who feel different from one another? Because gold, there isn't a huge difference between gold and red, in my opinion. They're both viewpoint characters you play as to go on a Pokemon adventure. But Hidenori kind of recognizes that you have to give gold his own spin so he just doesn't feel like red all over again. And uh, by the way, uh, Joey's famous Rattata from the memes makes a little appearance in the manga. So uh, I would say the, the way that we establish gold as different than red is gold's the kid who wears his hat backwards because that, that's what makes him cool. Uh, he's, got, he's got some 90s too. So there are some goofy things that are meant to separate him. And then there are also some substantive things that are meant to separate him. So one of the goofy things is that he's a pool, he's a pool sharp. And so he uh, uses a pool cue and uh, fires his pokeballs like they're pool balls, which that's just, that, that, that's just like a silly creative idea. The pokeballs are kind of like pool balls. Sure. Yeah. Uh, this also continues the theme where it's not just important what the Pokemon's abilities are. It's important how the trainer uses and deploys his Pokemon. So he uses this to do creative tricks like firing his Pokemon uh, behind his enemy so, his, so the Pokemon can attack the enemy from behind or bouncing the ball off of something so that he can get something that, you know, somebody stole from him. That, that kind of silly creative uh, stuff. However, uh, Gold also has a couple negative character traits. Uh, like Red... He's very impulsive and intuitive, and he has a long history with Pokemon. He's been with Pokemon since he was an infant. So in some ways, he's ahead of the curve on a lot of kids his age, which, make, which makes him pretty cocky and self-sure. He, he actually is a talented kid, but he's also girl crazy. He's simping for uh, the cute girl on the radio, D DJ Mary. He tends to be very selfish and self-focused. Like, he'll help you out. He'll help you get your stolen property back, but he's mostly doing it because he wants to get his stolen property back, and he might as well help you out while he's hel helping himself out. Uh, and because he's talented, he's just very confident. He can just like hop into it and take care of things relying on his intuitive abilities. Now, a lot of these traits uh, parallel Red. Red was an intuitive fighter. He went, he fought by instinct. And over time, Red learned to also strategize a little bit and prepare before his fights while never giving up his sort of creative, uh, quick thinking spirit. Uh, gold is this... Uh, character trait, of a positive character trait, exaggerated to a, char a character flaw. He flies by the seat of his pants and basically only thinks of himself through most of these situations. 
Uh, flashing forward a bit, he meets Professor Oak, who, as we know, is like the biggest Chad in all of Pokemon. And uh, Gold expects to be given a Pokedex because he's talented and because he's uh, needs one to help out. And Oak basically makes the point that I these are really hard to make. I only give them to people I really trust. And he thinks of like the last generation of Pokemon trainers that he worked with. All of them basically proved themselves, even if they were fl flawed in some way, all of them proved their ability uh, basically to demonstrate ma maturity. So when Gold kind of like has a temper tantrum and demands it, that just reinforces Oak's opinion that he's not he's not ready to have one. Now, of course, eventually, uh, Gold uh, demonst demonstrates some courage. He dives headlong into a river to save a Pokemon, which is stupid, and, o and Oak chews him out. But uh, what he asks him is, how do you think of your Pokemon? Uh, Red has called his Pokemon comrades. Yellow has called her Pokemon friends. And Gold basically says, well, I think of my Pokemon as family. I think of them as partners. Like, friend, friend isn't even a strong enough word to describe how I think of my Pokemon, which for Oak is like the key thing he's looking for. He, he doesn't like it when you think of these, these creatures as me, mere tools. So although Gold is very immature, he has kind of the quality that Oak is looking for in the next generation to, to carry on his work. Uh, after that, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to what I've said about previous volumes. There are cool little adventures. There are, there's a trap joke where Gold sees what he thinks is a cute girl and goes to hit on her. And then it re turns out it's a guy. <laughs> great, great stuff, great stuff like that. Uh, sweet, innocent, fu fun adventures with creative, uh, with creative battles and, uh, strategies to get themselves out, out of tough situations. Uh, Silver. But, so the, the rival is always important because the rival is someone who kind of like pushes you to move on. Silver's kind of a combination of green and blue in the previous volumes. Green was sort of a minxish thief who would uh, steal Pokemon and kind of like nut, uh, nod and wink as she was getting away with it. And blue was sort of a cold, logical thinker. Uh, again, this very gold and silver very much parallel red, red and blue, but... Uh, the the emphases are a little bit different, which is what keeps it keeps it fresh. Gold's a boy who's impulsive like Red, but much more impulsive than Red. Silver is a little cold and logical like Blue, but is also kind of a crook who's working outside of the law. So just by changing a few little characteristics, even though the parallels are still very strong, it keeps it fresh and it lets them feel like they're their own characters rather than carbon copies of uh, the previous generation. I think I touched on everything I wanted to touch on. Yeah, it, it, if you loved the red and blue manga, uh, Kusaka and Mato continue their excellent partnership and they continue producing uh, what I consider to be just like top shelf, excellent children's entertainment adventure stories, but also really good examples of adapting source, source material creatively. So uh, these are a little harder to find, Gold and Silver. I think the Gen 1ers keep the first few volumes constantly in print. You might have to go find these used somewhere, and you might have to pay a little bit more for them. But definitely a uh, high recommendation for a Pokemon fan's collection, high high recommendation for a young reader's uh, reading collection. I, don't, I think these would get read and reread and reread over and over again. High, highest quality uh, children and entertainment you can find in comics, I think. All right, with that, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Catch you later.